Hello everyone, welcome to Overzealous Law Logical, or OWL Reviews, where today I'll be bringing you book field analysis about Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wien. To start out, Codename Verity is historical fiction set in World War II, so, you know, get ready to cry your dang eyes out, because it's already sad. So right off the bat, the book starts with Julie, one of the main characters, having already been caught by the Gestapo, so... <laughs> It's already pretty depressing, and obviously you assume that since she was caught by the Gestapo, she's gonna end up in a concentration camp. But no! Guess what? It's even worse than that! Can you even imagine a worse outcome than that? I do usually put spoilers in my videos. I actually don't even want to say what happens because it's so heart-wrenching, but also just perfect for the story. It's hard to explain. Just... Just be ready to cry for the entire book. <sighs> okay, I just need a minute. Just thinking about it. It's making me sad again. Elizabeth Ween kind of dangles this hope in front of you at one point, and so you just... You want so badly to cling to that hope. You want everything to somehow end up being okay. And then she snatches that away. Even though the book uses World War II as the, the setting, I have to say actually parts of the book were more of a dashing adventure. Because of Julie's narration, that's how, what makes the first part dashing, even though it's also very tense because you know her, her actual situation but she's so clever that she basically convinced the Gestapo to let her write a love letter to her best friend, and in the same time disguising that as a confession, but in that letter also giving crucial information that comes into play in the second half when you get to Maddie's narration. So then what makes Maddie's narration a dashing adventure is that she ends up unwittingly at first part of the resistance because she's stuck in France, they do manage to get their hands on Julie's confession and you realize how much is actually going on in the first part of the book that you don't even realize. Even when I was reading it, figuring out that she was actually giving away important information and all this other stuff, when you get to Maddie's part you realize there's even more going on in the first part than you figured out. I don't know why I keep switching between I and you, but... And the friendship between Julie and Maddie is just so so perfectly rendered. The characters themselves are perfectly rendered. They're so understanding of each other and at first they seem like such an odd couple when you see how they first got to know each other and all this other stuff. They end up fitting together perfectly. Their friendship is the heart of this book and that's what makes the book worth reading and rereading and rereading. I had to suck the whole cigarette down to the butt in five or six long drags, composing myself to answer. Verity, I said in English, and exhaled every last molecule of nicotine and oxygen I had inside me. Then gasped, truth is the daughter of time, not authority, and this, above all, to thine own self be true. I gibbered a bit, I confess. Verity, I am the soul of Verity. I laughed so wildly, then, that Hamschenfer had to clear his throat to remind me to control myself. I am the soul of Verity, I repeated. Je suis le spirit de vérité. And now in Maddie's section you find out that the reporter Georgia Penn was actually working with the resistance and she relays to Maddie all the information that she learned from Julie. The captain and slave girl were both there and one or two others and they all sat around drinking cognac, except the slave girl of course, in the captain's dead swanky office where Julie has been temporarily put to work as a translator. So in fact she's actually doing what she was sent here to do. No name given, no military service or rank mentioned, she introduced herself to Penn as a wireless operator. She has told the Nazis she's a wireless operator. Madness! That's not why she's here, and so now they've gone to a lot of effort to get code out of her. Penn hadn't any doubt they got code out of her. Must be obsolete or invented, but definitely something they can try to work with. You guys, Julie and Maddie are just so brave! That is my book field analysis about Codename Verity by Elizabeth Ween. And just be ready to cry forever. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and please subscribe to our channel so you can get all of our future book reviews. Thanks for watching and happy reading.